Hey friends and welcome. This is Dr. Heather coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather and we are going to help give you some amazing ideas for planning menus. So um, we've been doing some more cooking tutorials as you guys have asked. If, if you're missing something, you guys can actually hop over to my YouTube channel which is Ask Dr. Heather. But tonight I'm going to give you some very simple ideas of kind of actually how we teach our patients to do some meal plannings. Um, we do a lot of allergy testing in our office so oftentimes when people get back some food panels or like um, how do we actually keep some of those foods out of our um, food meals? Say that like wheat shows up and they're like, oh my gosh, how do we live without wheat? Well, we don't want them taking out wheat and putting rice in for everything. Or if milk shows up, putting in rice milk, rice cheese, all those sorts of things. We all know that we need to eat from a rainbow of style of foods. We also know that we need to make sure that we're rotating our foods through there, rotating our meats, rotating our vegetables, rotating um, our fats. So tonight, oh, my puppy just walked in. Tonight we're gonna do just that. We're actually gonna help you, show you how I actually create a menu in my home, how we can help you rotate through those foods. Sorry, it seems a little backwards to me, so I wanna make sure that the meals are uh, the, um, that the board showed up right. And this is actually meant to be just a really homemade board because hopefully if your kiddos are home, this is something they can do. As you guys know, I have four boys. They are now 17 to 25. We discovered food allergies very, very early on. My third son was very sick at the age of three and a half to four years old. That's when we discovered that he has some significant food allergies and sensitivities. We had to take away soy and dairy, egg yolks, uh, um, gluten again he just turned 22 so we've been doing this for a very long time in our in our diet but that really helped me help other people hundreds of other people over the last 17 plus years help them eat much healthier so uh, uh, again I'm sorry it's backwards so it's making me stumble a little bit but we actually have a board in our kitchen it's a big dry erase board that we have each day of the week so I'm gonna show you what I actually homemade here for you guys today I'm gonna show the board here so we have breakfast lunch and dinner try to get this for you guys and then I actually did just days a week so Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday so at our house I'm gonna make this up close guys here so just bear with me I know it's not perfect but that's okay um, and this is something your kiddos can do so Monday is always a beef day for us so if you could do Monday you could put beef down here I have some parents when beef shows up say okay if we're gonna have beef on Monday what could you make out of beef you could have hamburgers you could do tacos you could do steak you could do meatballs you could do meatloaf there's lots of things you can do with meat say you're going to have a chicken day chicken day is Tuesday in our house because of how the trash lines up so if you had chicken say chicken's going to be Tuesday well you could have chicken wings you could have chicken breast you could have grilled chicken baked chicken lots of things I actually have a book this is 101 ways to actually cook chicken so you could do that as well so you can do lots of different ways and I'm actually going to start pinning things up here to the board so let's say Monday is a beef day so I'm going to put it just right here let's say Tuesday is going to be a chicken day so we're going to just pin it right here to the board hope the board doesn't fall down and then what we do is we actually have I'm looking through my note cards so what I did do is I actually took my note cards and I have a lot of parents do that and I have kiddos take a food list and I'm happy to send you guys my food list just shoot me your email address and I'll do that for you um, and I actually will show you on my computer what I have pulled up here of my email list because I have a vegetable vegetable list let me show you guys right now so the vegetable list you can see is a three series of vegetables um, of glycemic issues, an A, B, and a C. The A is actually a lower glycemic list that has uh, probably about 25 different vegetables on it. So I have families just write all the vegetables on there. I know it's backwards right now, but um, the B and C just actually go up with glycemic, which means more sugar. So I'll have families just take and put all the vegetables on a card, whether it's spinach or radishes or I know we're reading backwards here for me. <laughs> um, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, celery, chard, cucumbers, mushrooms, um, sauerkraut, spinach, string beans, that kind of stuff. And then if you go to list number two, which is a higher sugar list, you're gonna see things like bell peppers and green beans, okra, olives, pickles, rhubarbs, pimentos. Those all go up on the list number two. And then list number three is gonna th be things like, believe it or not, beets, avocados, um, squash, butternut squash, leeks, onions, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, all those things are number three. So what we have kids do is either put all the vegetables in a hat and they can draw it out and then they just pin it to the board. 
So when our kids were little, we had a baseball cap we put them in and a much littler thing and we just had them pin it to the board. But let's go back to our proteins. We know proteins are vital because we have 21 essential amino acids that we need. So I did the same thing with the protein in case you guys have duck or you have access to duck that you eat. Maybe you guys eat pork in your diet. Um, I thought I had everything written down here. <laughs> I know I do. So we have, I have rabbit turkey. So let's say that Wednesday is a turkey day. Actually, turkey day for us is actually Thursday. I'm going to put it this way because we actually do fish two times a week. So we have a fish day, which is generally a white fish day, but I'm going to, a pink, let's do a pink fish day on Wednesday. So that can be salmon or can be trout. And then we do like a white fish day or maybe a seafood, maybe a scallop fish day if you don't have an allergy on Friday. So you guys can see I'm just actually pinning the different meats to the board. And then you can start to just have and put green beans. So put green beans on your beef day if you want to do that. So that's another simple way. This is not turning out as I thought it might. <laughs> turning out hopefully like it is. Hopefully you guys are getting the gist of this. I think people are dropping off. But then you just simply start pinning like green beans to the board. You can do that. Thanks for the thumbs up there. So you can put that. You can do eggplant if you want to do eggplant parmesan the next day you can do chicken and your kids can just pull out of a hat maybe they're gonna actually pull out um gosh I got, I got all these little cards I made here maybe they're gonna pull out green beans with their chicken on this day and then they're gonna maybe on the salmon day they just go to the next one and they pull out salad green so you can put salad with that if you want to do it that way so I'm gonna clear the board here a second and then there's another way to do it so either you can just take the the protein and then write the vegetables on there and kids like to do that believe it or not when they get more active in doing this um, and they know what's coming they're like yes when they pull it out of the hat like yes I pulled out green beans or yes I pulled out carrots and you always want to make a list that the majority of the people like again we have four kids which is a larger family I know um, these days but some people just have one or two kiddos so it's kind of fun as they pick it out um, and they generally cheer for each other when they pull out something maybe it's a cucumber salad or snack or things like that but believe it or not when kids can get more involved in that they have a lot more fun and there's a ton of cooking books that I used to go to the library and get books where it was kids cooking where you can do ants on a log where you're doing things like taking and making or we used to do a lot of bell peppers you can make a lot of animals out of bell peppers a lot of animals out of cucumbers um, and that used to be a super fun thing to do even cutting up eggplants it's actually really economical to do that and the kids end up eating them anyway so and sometimes it's a great way to hide a vegetable and they don't even know what's going on another way to do this and I'm gonna actually read this because this is not coming out like I want I probably think I should get a sliding erase board but I did make some I did make some breakfast ones so or you can actually have like four or five breakfast ideas so maybe one day you have two eggs with spinach maybe the next day you do an almond an almond meal waffle so we could be pinning this to the board as well if I could get this to figure out so I'm gonna stop messing with this so much and trying to get to figure out but it's the same thing in our kitchen it hangs there but so you would just put on Monday's breakfast two eggs and spinach so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up there because I already have it written. And then maybe you're gonna have an almond meal waffle with some berries on the next day. Or maybe you wanna have a piece of bacon with it. That could be Tuesday. And then maybe you wanna do your keto cream the next day because you're gonna do some intermittent fasting on Wednesday or that's gonna be a day you maybe do Omed, which is your 24 hour fast. And maybe on Wednesday, you want to do something a little more vegan or vegetarian, where maybe you're going to do some hemp protein powder or a chia seed pudding, because you want to really just have at least four breakfast options and rotate that through there. One of my kiddos loves smoked salmon and just celery and nut butter for breakfast. So that can be a breakfast as well, or granola. So if you guys can see that, we just actually put it up put along the board and when you have kiddos they like to actually pin it up there you can make a magnet out of it you can also do some type of creative stuff I used to have kids cut them out at magazines when magazines would come to the house and they can do that so you guys are home these days and maybe you're just cleaning out some stuff because that's something you can do at this time they can clean out they can cut out vegetables they can make the note cards so there's two options you can either just go across and say beef on Monday chicken on Tuesday Pinkfish on Wednesday, turkey on Thursday, uh, whitefish on Friday, which would be cod or halibut, something like that, or maybe a shellfish. And then Friday could be pork, like pork chop, pork loin, ham if you do that. And then Sunday could be a leftover day or a barbecue day. And then again, just pick out a vegetable. You honestly don't end up spending more money. You actually end up having less leftovers. You throw away less food and you actually end up saving a lot more money because then you just make a recipe off, make a grocery list off of this. And then it's really easy to go. So along with 
the breakfast idea where you have four different breakfast ideas, you do the exact same thing with dinner ideas. So let me find those here. So this is, again, probably more what we do in our house. We kind of ask the kids, what do you want to have for dinner? So we'll ask them who wants to have like a meatloaf day. So we'll go back to that. So if Monday's going to be meatloaf day, we'll say, okay, let's have meatloaf, cauliflower, and green beans. So we'll put that on Monday. And then we'll go back and say, we have Taco Tuesday. So that's pretty easy. Every Tuesday or every other Tuesday, you want to rotate that. The kids will know that we're going to have fajitas or taco on Tuesday. And then we can do a cauliflower rice if you're more low carb, or you could do some pork rinds if you want to do that instead of having it that way. Then, um, again, I pulled out, this is, uh, I just have some pulled pork. We love to do our smoking grilling here in Kansas City. We're known for a barbecue. So pulled pork, some pickles, some salad, maybe some pork rinds on, pork rinds on the side. Maybe you're low carb and you do some beans on the side. That's okay. So I'm going to put that pulled pork on Saturday because that's something we would do on a weekend. And then some grilled fish steamed vegetables, something, again, we had shrimp last night, so I simply just did a double boiler, pinch on shrimp on there for three minutes. That's all it takes. It takes longer to clean the shrimp, to devein it, than nothing else. And then we just had some veggies on the side, um, leftover big salad that we did. So, again, you just kind of put it on the board like that. But other things we have on here is... A Cobb salad. I post a lot of Cobb salads. It's kind of my one of my favorite meals because it's kind of everything left over with whatever lettuce or, or cabbage or spinach is left over. So it's kind of my thing. And either it's bacon bits or spinach or it's olives or jalapenos. So I love a Cobb salad because then whenever nuts or seeds are left over, I throw that on there as well. So that's always great, like on a weekend or on a busy, busy Thursday for me. Other things: turkey burger, lettuce wrap. Again, my kids love pickles. Um, so a turkey burger on a lettuce wrap, that's something you're not always buying beef, but you're rotating through that. So a turkey burger could be another thing because we have th turkey on Thursday. So we just put a turkey burger on there. So that would be easy, easy to do. If you have venison, then you could do a venison burger. We do breakfast for dinner probably. Again, this is kind of every other thing. So we do breakfast for dinner, which would be a nice big omelet day. Kind of, again, the same way that you would do a cob, whatever's kind of left over in the fridge. If you've got some shredded pork, you've got some shredded beef, um, you've got some leftover red bell peppers, but not enough for a whole family of six because we're a full house of six. Maybe just a few handfuls of spinach, maybe just a handful of like ham leftover or a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Then it's actually fun to have kind of an omelet bar at our house and you can just mix or match with that. Tony says, are your kids staying put and you all are healthy? Yes, we are. We are actually under quarantine four counties in Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri are under quarantine. We are one of those. So it is funny that the ice cream shop up the street is open and the tending window shop right next door to our clinic is actually open. So it is kind of funny what is considered mandatory for, anyway, I won't go there. So yes, we are staying healthy and we are staying well. So I want to give people some ideas because if you're going to go to the store one time a week, and this is really what I have found. This actually came out of being like a busy mom of four and having a full busy clinic of like, how do you help people do this, trying to eat healthy, eat well? You make a menu and it starts with this, rotating the foods, rotating the meat, rotating the vegetables. And people are like, well, my kids don't like it. I'm like, I have four kids. There's never a day where everybody's 100% happy with the menus or the meals. It just is not going to happen that way. I'm going to try to move this so you guys can kind of see this as we talk. But I can tell you is that the more that you do this and the more that you're going to stay like true to this, like, hey, you guys, we're going to do this. And so you might not like every vegetable every day, but I can guarantee you that there will be a day that you will have it your day and you'll love it. Like a fajita day will be your day that you love. Shrimp will be the day that you love or maybe steak day. So we, Isaac is 17. He grilled steak. Um, he made his own sauce for our salad tonight and grilled mushrooms and onions. I do not like mushrooms, portobellas, but Christian and my husband and um, Isaac love them. I do not. Nick does not. And neither does my mom, but they had them. They're super healthy, lots of vitamin D, but I will just have my vitamin D in a capsule. So we have a choice that way. We also had some leftover broccoli. You know, it was enough for my mom and I to have, but we had a big, big, big salad. And then the boys had a little potatoes with some rosemary. So again, knowing their ages, they can have a few more carbs in it and they're totally satisfied. So they are doing well. So Tony, again, with shopping, we're shopping like we've always done once every week to two weeks. Um, we're not hoarding. We're not overbuying for months on end. We buy local when we can. And that's been a great thing. I'm going to give you guys a tip there. So hopefully this helps you guys. And again, if you want me to give you my kind of, I have an autoimmune paleo, low carb keto, um, 
I would say paleo list because it just depends on how you mix and match it up. If you're eating beets and stuff on your salad, it makes you more paleo. If you're keeping the beets out, but you're putting radishes on it, that's going to make you more keto. Um, sorry, my German Shepherd's trying to sneak in here and visit with us. She may pull the light out. Um, so that just, again, I can send you that. Just shoot me your email and I'll be happy to send that over. It's also got my porridge recipe. It has my um, tuna salad. I eat tuna salad for breakfast a lot. What I did want to say in this time is that when people are being more reserved, like Tony's saying, hey, I really don't want to go to the store as much. This is a great time. We used to say that pe the average person ate 17 times a day. We used to say that if you ate four times a day, if you only ate three meals a day, I've got this thing backwards, that we could actually eradicate world hunger. So this can be an amazing time where you can actually be involved in a little bit more intermittent fasting. So when I talked about breakfast options, having smoked salmon and maybe celery with some nut butter, having a fat coffee or keto cream and going to those two meals a day or having one day where you do OMED, which is one meal every day. So you do a 24 hour fast, which is lunch to lunch, save on groceries. You're gonna save on, you're gonna save on groceries. You're gonna save on wasting. So you're not overcooking and not overthrowing away. So Tony, send that to my, um, my Facebook messenger because I don't want your email going out to everybody and other people soliciting you. So I'm gonna just, I'll, I'll um, erase that or if you wanna send it to messenger and then I'll get that sent to you. But what I found though is that when people start doing intermittent fasting and families have brought this to me, like I've saved $1,200 doing this meal plan. This is before keto came about. Like I've saved $1,000 a month because we're not driving through, we're not overeating. I'm not just buying random this and that I'm actually planning a meal I'm sitting down with my husband for 15 or 20 minutes doing exactly this beef on Monday without but give me meatballs or hamburgers or steak or round steak whatever you want to do chicken on Tuesday whether it's chicken wings or rotisserie chicken buy a bag of veggies throw some almonds or throw some butter or some bacon bits on it people save a ton of money there with my German Shepherd Danny <laughs> I may have to get some help here. Sorry, guys. I'll even have a headset in here. Um, she's so excited. Danny. Um, sorry. <laughs> yes, she's excited. It's time to go walking. Um, so people will find this is a great time to do some intermittent fasting. So I saved all my bones. I did pick up some chicken feet this week. So I'm going to make a broth because I love to do some fasting. And that's where you use something like a keto cream to help with the fasting. You guys know I love my um, I love my exogenous ketones. It's also a great time that I made some keto jello bites because people are like, I'm home all day. I'm really feeling the stress happening. So that's when you can have a bite of jello bites. So you can make about 12 to 14 little bites of keto bites of jello out of this. Um, and now what that does is it helps you feel fuller longer it helps take away the snacking so you're not going for those unwanted processed food and also when you make a grocery list and you make just the food that you want and the things you have for snacking are things like cucumbers and celery and pumpkin seeds you're not going to go back to the old style of stress eating it's actually going to calm your body down because ketones calm your body down healthy felts fats calm your body down but when you can go through and make something simple and this is honestly something your kids can do and I will post and share I have all these meals on a one simple sheet I will email out to you again we just have kiddos just again put cucumbers put green beans whatever vegetables you think they'll eat and you honestly only need to have four different breakfasts to rotate through you need to have about eight lunch slash dinners that you'll rotate through and then again think of it like a school lunch or a hospital menu where you actually just check things that's all you really need to do and then whether it's a green bean one night put bacon bits on it for the healthy fat one night put butter on it for the healthy fat maybe one time put slivered almonds or pecans on it for a healthy fat just kind of rotate the fat you put on it and it kind of mixes it up a little bit for your family and again makes it super simple so mike says carl and i saved about 300 dollars a month eating this way and mike that's what i hear all the time when people stick to a menu and they start doing the intermittent fasting they save hundreds of dollars and i'm telling you i've heard thousands before because they stopped buying the soda they stop buying the processed foods. They stop buying the box cereal and the gallons of milk because there's more calcium in a red bell pepper than there is in a cup of milk or a gallon of milk. And then when you happens, is fats make you feel fuller longer. You have satiety. You're not up and down and eating 17 times a day and buying processed foods. So that's where I really feel people start feeling the benefit. Like, oh my gosh, I'm eating less. I'm eating healthier. I'm feeling better. And then, you know, you're getting back to your true ideal body weight. Dr. Ralph had a great... Um, a great live yesterday I shared that he talked about Danny I have a beautiful German Shepherd but hey Isaac or Christian I have children home I only know how to silence this Danny come here come here honey come here come here I have the best window in my office hey you guys 
it's time to go walking. If you guys have a dog, put a dog down below. I have an 85 pound German Shepherd who's still a baby that we adopted, <laughs> but she has, a, she has a mean bark. Anyway, when you start doing this, again, I'm happy to share all this information with you. Just let me know if it will help you out. But what you'll find is that you actually find you're gonna try new recipes. Um, you're gonna find that you're eating a variety of foods because our body has needs 21 essential amino acids. So you're gonna get that when you start eating a variety of foods. Back in the 80s, we were taught to eat chicken, 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 or chicken breast, not the chicken thighs or skin, or we were always draining out our, um, <laughs> thanks Mike for posting his doggies, or we were actually washing away hamburger and the fat. Now we know we need the fat back and then people aren't willing to try new things. So, you know, like I say, I do buy better broth. I also make my own chicken broth. I save the bones from the chicken wings that we eat. You're recycling the food. And I've been doing this the whole time, not just since this virus has gone, um, you know, this virus has erupted around the globe, but it's a, just a great way to help. Again, I do this because I see so many families in my office, like I can't get my kids to eat better. And we do need to get our kids to eat better because this is really what it's about. And there's a lot of this or that I have on my YouTube video. Um, everything is free. I have a lot of cooking videos. You'll see it's free and why because I don't, spend, don't know how to spend a lot of time making fancy little front covers for it. Also on my blog, AskDrHeather.net, go to Healthy Bites. I have a whole vegetable section. I have a whole um, fish section. If you're not eating a lot of fish, you know, cardiologist, heart doctors, endocrinologists, we all know we eat more healthy fish or higher in some of those healthy omega oils that we need for our brain health and our heart health. So maybe if you're not trying fish, eat some fish. Sometimes it's a great time now to just, and I always kind of rotate what's on sale, whether it's salmon or tuna or mahi, you know, kind of buy what's on sale for that night and rotate through them and then try and pick up a couple different vegetables. So I love it. We're making our grocery list this week and we always ask the boys, what do you want? What's different? You know, what could you want? And, and my son Christian is like, we need some new vegetables in the house. Get some asparagus. We haven't had that for a little while. I'm thinking we just had that and so I feel like we're always having Brussels sprouts. We're always having cabbage. We're always having, anyway, I feel like we always are having a lot of vegetables, but that's good that I love that my kids are actually craving and asking for more vegetables. But I just wanted to pop on here because a lot of people are saying, what to do with my kids when they're home? Let them cut out pictures of foods or pictures of menus that come in flyers or grocery stores and start cutting them out. I think I threw away a flyer um, from our high V is our local grocery store. So when you get things like this, this is our local grocery store. This is a sushi um, thing, but they had some other recipes in here. She is going to pull that light over yet. Um, but have kiddos just start cutting out pictures, not of peeps, but of, um, you know, different foods in here that they find that they like. Like here is an asparagus that had like a hollandaise sauce on it. Um, it looks pretty delicious. I know it's backwards for my brain here today and has like some bacon bits and stuff on it. So something a little bit different that you might want to try, but have the kids start cutting out pictures of food and just let them just cut, cut, cut away. And then you'll be amazed what they start to find. And then what's going to happen is they're going to read like, oh, mom, did you know that avocados have a ton of potassium? Did you know avocados were a fruit? Like, did you ever know that? Hey, did you know that salmon was super good for that? So what's going to happen is you're going to start finding your kiddos or grandkiddos. Cause I know right now with kids, not being in school, we have family members, neighbors, other people actually helping out with kiddos. You're going to find them start finding a lot more interest in foods. And this is kind of a fun time for them to get involved doing more things with food. So you can find a lot of food art online. You can let them help plan with some of the menu items. So if you guys join me late, what we did, Danny's in the trash now. What we did is we actually did a little bit of menu planning, either by putting all the different vegetables on a card and just lining it up and putting it down days per week. Or we made some really simple menu ideas like breakfast for dinner, or we just did like um, meatballs. They didn't do this meatballs with zucchini noodles or miracle noodles. If you want to get keto or low carb, um, we talked about intermittent fasting or big cop style with this, everything on a leftover in your fridge and throw some type of vinegar and oil on top or any type of burger, whether it's a bison burger, a beef burger, a turkey burger, um, a salmon burger, and then just have some cold slaw and a pickle on the side or have a slab of ribs and just watch the sauce and have some good seasoning. So hopefully I brought some new ideas to your mind today that might help you out. Again, if you wanna have more questions, drop them down below. I'd be super excited to help you with those. This is Dr. Heather Carden and tomorrow, we're going to start talking about stress because that's what everybody's talking about. What is our stress response? How do we know if our adrenal glands are under stress? 
how do we know if stress is really affecting our body? Well, we're gonna give you some free tips tomorrow of how you can tell if stress is affecting your body simply by checking your blood pressure, by checking your body temperature, your blood pressure in different positions, by checking your pulse in different positions. Um, and we're gonna tell you how you can do that because when we start talking about stress and we're talking a lot about stress and how it affects your immune system, we're gonna start talking about how those actually start affecting your body and how you can actually stop that from happening. So you guys have a great day. Again, this is Dr. Heather live from Ask Dr. Heather. If you want to know how to um, get my free downloadable, it has my autoimmune food list of vegetables, fruits, and fats. Simply just shoot me your email through um, through the Facebook Messenger. I don't want people actually dropping their emails down here because sometimes they're just giving me a big high five and I can send that through you through Messenger. A big high 10, I'll send that through you. So you guys have a great day and we'll be seeing you soon.